in meters to centimeters i use 100 i multiply by 100 because i'm moving from centimeters to i'm moving from meters to centimeters understand when you're moving from uh, centimeters to meters i divide by 100 clear enough isn't it conversion factors work like that when you are moving to 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 units which are higher like moving from centimeters to meters uh, you divide if you're moving to to units which are lower moving like for example moving from meters to centimeters you multiply by that factor in this case it's uh, just a hundred moving from centimeters to meters uh, you use a conversion factor of a hundred you just need uh, to to know it the way it is understand do not try and over complicate it or if you have better methods of converting you can use those but i think this is the safest method note understand if you are not told what the vertical scale should be for example make the vertical scale one centimeter is equals to 100 meters you can use your own vertical scale like one centimeter equals to 50 meter it doesn't matter to me understand if you are not told uh, what the vertical scale should be use your own vertical scale understand uh, it, it, it's it's your own uh, thinking that will eventually give you the marks if you are not told but for most cases you are told that you should use actually uh, one centimeter is equals to 100 meter or you should, should use one centimeter one centimeter is, is 40 meters or, or something like that uh, because you need to calculate something else after that one I uh, will go to that something else in a few minutes. Sharp. Now, note that uh, if you have enough experience drawing cross sections, you don't have to round up or round down the vertical scale limits. Understand? You can just go an interval up. Interval meaning that the the, um, the counter interval was twenty on the last map, so you can just move from 1660 to 1680 fine and the lower limits you can just say is 1360 fine or you can just use the 1380 the way it is or you can use the 1660 the way it is now this depends on experience understand the most experienced people use the values the way they are because they don't have to think in between this is what i'm going to do this is what i'm going to do they know what to do understand but for you still starting out with uh, less experience than they do it's better you use the method that i showed you but anyway i'm sure you are bright kids you find a way to do it now activity two page 29 you only do 1.1 understand you uh, draw the cross section for 1.1 and that's it now also remember that uh, you do have your map work exercise books the cross sections uh, belongs to the section of of map works understand so you need to do your activities on that exercise book but if you or it happens that i give you a theory work for for term two i'll explain further when you're doing theory work for term two what you need to do uh, i will not immediately give you the corrections understand i hope that we come back immediately after the 16th of april so i can give you the corrections and make you sign if you didn't do the work understand but uh, in a case that we do not come back uh, immediately after the 16th of april i'll make a plan for people who did uh, the work they'll show me their work and i'll correct them there and there or give them corrections we'll see what we need to do now the gradients understand uh the gradient is just the steepness or the gentleness of the slope the gradient is just the steepness or gentleness gentleness of the slope now looking on your left hand side uh, you see what a steep slope more or less looks like and what a gentle slope might more or less look like uh, uh, I'm not insulting your intelligence. I know what uh, a steep slope might look like <laughs> for me, but uh, for 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 learners who who might not know or have no idea, I hope this uh, slide 
gives you an idea or gives you a clue what a uh, steep slope looks like, a uh, gentle slope might look like. Now, looking at the map, how do we know that uh, this is a gentle slope, this is a steep slope? Now we look at the contour lines. Uh, for contour lines which are close to each other, like the contour lines on your left hand side, uh, that is a steep slope. And on your right hand side, those are gentle uh, slope or gentle slope, so to speak. Mm, still the same uh, figure, 1.26, page 27. Understand? If you look at contour lines which are far apart, the landscape is, is, is gentle. And if you look at contour lines which are close to each other, the landscape is the steep. Calculating the gradient of a slope. Now, the gradient of a slope is like finding the ratio of the slope of the vertical distance to the horizontal distance. Understand? We say calculating because we use numbers, but it's just finding the ratio of the vertical distance to the horizontal distance. Now, calculating the gradient A, B. Now, we go back to our map page 27 figure 1.26. Understand that Phillips Town map. Um, I I did the liberty of putting a new point there, D, in between. Now, obviously, if you have a textbook, you can just use a pencil. Do not use a pen. Use a pencil to put D there. Now we know that at point A, uh, when we're doing the cross sections, that uh, point A is actually 1380 meters above sea level and my point d is 1660 meters above sea level it's that contour line which is 1660 above sea level and then i measured using a ruler that the distance between the two ad is 4.3 centimeters uh, i don't know if you find something different but this is what i found if you, you did find something different it shouldn't differ by five centimeters or actually even by three centimeters it shouldn't differ by that understand we should be at four point something all of us should be at four point something we're good now calculating the gradient of a slope understand now convert the vertical distance and the horizontal distance into the same unit. You can convert these into meters, you can convert these into kilometers, but it must be of the same units. Understand? Now, yes, uh, the units need mm, to be the same. Understand? I used meters. Uh, remember that uh, the vertical distance, understand, is uh, the lowest height to the highest height on your contour lines. Understand? The lowest height above sea level that you see on your contour line, and then the highest height uh, that you see uh, on that contour line or between A and D. Understand? Even if we we asked to calculate uh, the gradient between A and B, we use the same concept. Understand? Mm, uh, for example, at A, it's one thousand three hundred and eighty. Wherever uh, the new height is is at, it's either higher than one thousand three hundred and eighty or lower than one thousand three hundred and eighty. But uh, the, the the vertical distance is the difference between the lower height and the highest height. And my difference was like two hundred and eighty meters understand and then the horizontal distance ad was 4.3 centimeters as we have measured with the ruler and then we convert uh, the 4.3 centimeters into understand into meters because i want uh, my units on the vertical distance to be the same as my units now on the step two this converting the vertical distance and horizontal, horizontal distance into a ratio lost, now, uh, there is not a question formula group. that uh, converts I'll try uh, to answer it as quick uh, as numbers into ratios but it's, it's just logic understand no so i created a little something for you now vertical distance divided by the vertical distance understand that that's the difference in height understand divide by the uh, the distance in height so we can get a one 
Understand on your left hand side of the ratio, you're supposed to have a one. So this is how you get a, a one. You take the vertical distance.